Yes, I cared for Alan Spaulding. You were lovers, Miss Hill, weren't you? What does that have to do with the crimes that he committed? He was hiding Bren. He was paying him... Answer the question, Miss Hill. I am! Why are you having an affair with the defendant? All right, all right, all right. Danny, look, why don't we take it easy, okay? Just, just Miss Hill has got to learn to keep her cool on the witness stand. Because if she gets emotional, Spaulding's attorney will flay her alive. Mr. Spaulding! How shall I put this? <laughs> I won't serve you. Have breakfast someplace else. I'm looking for Alan Michael. Do you know where he is? I've checked the office. What part of that everybody? wasn't clear? You won't get the time of day here. I need to see my son. I know what you're up to, and it won't work. Donna wasn't in her room, and her bed wasn't slept in either. Damn. She was doing this just to get to us. Oh, no, no way. She spent the night with Roger Thorpe. What am I going to do, Matt? How am I going to get her away from that man? <sighs> Give her what she wants. How can I kiss you when you're all the way over there? What are you doing out of bed? Same thing I've been doing since 4 a.m. Thinking. So early for so much work. Come on back to bed. Don't you dare make fun of me, Roger. Like I am going over there. Okay, don't you think we ought to have a plan before we go barging in on them? My plan is to get my daughter out of your father's clutches, whatever it takes. Oh, maybe I should go alone. <sighs> don't worry as much as I want to. I'm not going to kill him. Okay, well, I sure hope not. I mean, what do you expect me to do? I mean, give up on my daughter completely? I'm not going to do that. Well, if they're together in his room... I can handle that. I have to. Let's go. I just hope I'm ready for this. Honey, Diana, come on. Listen, uh, I mean, I, definitely I wasn't making fun of you. I mean, I, I might have been teasing a little bit, but I mean, you're a wonderful, wonderful, sexy new part of my life. I mean, you were magnificent last night. You told the world, not to mention your mare and pair, that we were lovers. I mean, we're infamous now. We should be enjoying ourselves. easy for you to gloat. You have nothing to lose. I burned all of my bridges last night, Roger. Well, forgive me, but I thought that your bridges had gone up in flames long before last night. Isn't that why you made your grandstand confession? I, I got carried away. I kept waking up in the middle of the night, remembering that look on my father's face. Oh, you mean the patented one of Papa's disapproval? It was disgust. Do you have any idea what it feels like to have your own father look at you with disgust? Since you ask, yes. I also know it can be survived. I don't know. I have never seen him as mad as when he hit you. It, it scares me to think that my mother and father hate me so much that they may never talk to me again. Honey, you are overreacting. I have seen them madder at each other than they were last night. They're both a pair of self-righteous, arrogant snobbish fools, which is why they probably never were able to stay together. They're too much alike. They're still my parents, Roger. Hey, what is with all this morning after jittering, huh? I thought you were made of sterner stuff. Are you afraid your mother's going to change the rules about your trust fund? 
No, but I'm not totally mercenary. Oh, come on, Donnie, you're talking to me. It's, no, I, it's true. I just, I have this awful, empty feeling when I think about them not loving me anymore. You told me they never loved you, especially your mother. Well, not the way I wanted them to, but... Yeah, at least they, they worried about me, and they felt guilty. I liked that. I needed that. Hey, don't we all? I should not have thrown you in their faces last night. I, I should not have come back here with you. I just, I, I just made a big mistake. Ooh, that's not very flattering. Are you willing to take me in? You're not a foster child. Are you? Listen to me. Listen to me. Everything's gonna be okay. You got your parents' attention big time last night, like you've never had it before. You're so cynical. Well, I, come on, I'd like to keep my sense of humor. It's true. For instance, I find it very amusing that your parents think it's worse for you to be my lover than to be kidnapped by Victor Pachinoff. Yeah, well, for them it is. Come here, come here, come here. You know what? I'm gonna tell you something. Would you listen to me? My sweet, at this very minute, at this very minute, your mother and father are putting their mean-spirited little heads together, trying to figure out ways to break us up. And the deeper you slip into my clutches, the more attention you're going to get from them. You wait and see. They are going to come running after you, and you are going to win all the way around. I promise. What did I tell you? Look, if I give in to Dinah now, it would be the worst mistake I've ever made in my whole life. I didn't say give in to her. No, but you said give her what she wants, which is what? I don't know. Her job back, uh, condone her affair with Roger Thorpe, tell her she's been a wonderful little girl and everybody loves her, or give her her trust fund back. What? If you'd listen to me, I I'll explain it to you. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Well, you're right. If you gave in to her, paid her off, it would be a big mistake. Well, what then? When Victor was holding us hostage, we didn't know whether we were going to live or die, right? So it seemed really silly to, 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 to keep this fighting up that was going on between us. Well, during that time, Dinah got more real than I'd ever seen her. <laughs> oh, yeah? Lucky you. She's fooled me so many times, I have no idea when she's being real and when she's not. Yeah, well, I saw another side to her. I saw a scared little girl. Oh, Dinah? A scared little girl? She was petrified. I, 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 I think that I understood her better then than I ever have. I, I think I know now why she does what she does. Well, tell me. I don't have a clue. Well, I think that, that she lies and steals money and, and has affairs with dangerous men because she doesn't know how to get what she wants. What does she want? Love. Love. And attention. All the things that she thought everyone else got growing up except for her. Yeah, but honey, you've seen what happens when I reach out to her. She just pushes me away. And I don't think she really means to do that. I think that some attention is better than no attention at all. And I think she does these things because... She's mixed up. She doesn't know the difference between money and love. It's all one thing to her. Well, yeah, that I understand. I mean, with her, everything comes back to money. Maybe if you told her that you loved her, that you really loved her, she wouldn't throw this Roger thing in your face. Are you telling me that everything done is? It's my fault? Because I don't love her? Do you? Ah, uh, look, why don't we take a breather for a second, okay? It won't work that way when she's on the stand. Yeah, but you know something? I'm kind of in the mood for a break myself. Give me some coffee. Do you really want to do this? It's good for the real thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, do you really want to testify against Alan? I don't know that I can really back out now. The prosecution would just subpoena me. Why? I mean, where's all this coming from? Well, it seems like you're getting freaked out by these questions. 
Well, I don't like them, but I have to answer them. Robinson hasn't even let out his heavy artillery. You're the one who got me back on track. You made me believe it was the right thing to nail Alan to the wall. Hey, I still believe that Alan deserves to go to prison, okay? And I would hate to see him walk right now. But I'm just having second thoughts as to whether you are the person that should put him there. You think I'm going to lose it on the stand or something? You tell me. The case against Alan is weak. If I don't testify, it's Alan Michael's word against his father's. Okay, well, it's going to be brutal. And the tabloids are going to have a field day with this. Hell, you know this already. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. It's not too late to change your mind. I'm going to do this. Because I want to. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to tell the world what Alan Spaulding was like in bed? Do you want to tell everybody how many times you made love to him? Whether he was good for you or not? Because that's what we're talking about here, Tangi. Now, when you get on that witness stand, you're going to be wide open. Your guts are going to be poured out for everybody to see. Now, you have to ask yourself, and you have to be certain about this. Is this what you really want? You know nothing about me, Cooper. What I want, what I need. Just tell me where Alan Michael is. I need to speak with him. Speak with him? You mean coerce him? Lay some guilt on him so he won't testify against you in the preliminary hearing. I'm not going to give you a damn thing. Oh, then you do know where he is. Sir. Sure, I know where he is. He's got a message for you, as a matter of fact. He doesn't want to have anything to do with you, so get lost. There's no way he would confide in you, Buzz. You know, there's a time when you might have been right about that, but times have changed. Your son has changed. There might even be a real human being underneath all that Spalding crap. Being a Spalding means everything in the world to him. Nothing will change that. Well, who knows what will happen when you're in prison. I mean may even improve the family reputation. Oh, this from a man who abandoned his family for 20 years. You know, I may not have always succeeded, but I always tried to do something about that for my family. You, on the other hand, you, you, you came out of prison, you hit the ground running. You were lying, cheating, double-dealing your own son. Didn't learn much for in five years, did you? Lucky for me, you're not my judge. Lucky for you, I'm not. I do have another child, though, that I didn't leave. And this child, I stood by and watched the light go out of her eyes. And it was replaced by shame and guilt. By a man who raped her. And you helped that man try to escape. Considering your opinion of me, I'm amazed that you accepted the money that I gave you to help rebuild Fifth Street. Oh, dear. Can't leave you two alone for five minutes without trouble. Alex, go away. Alex, your timing's lousy. Well, no, from where I stand, I think it's perfect. You no, know, Cooper, why don't we just step outside and settle this man to man? Oh, Alan, no, 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 take it easy. Just stop this. Mr. Robinson, could we continue on with this, please? There we go. You ready to go on? Oh, yeah. <sighs> Listen, if you tell her that Alan's attorney is going to question her about every intimate detail of her relationship with her client. Plus a few she never thought of. He's going to try to impugn you as a witness. Well, I've always admired Sid. I never considered him to be ruthless. No. Sid is now working for Alan. Sid is being paid to get his client off. His best bet is to suggest that you are lying about Alan. Why would I do that? Because you have personal reasons to want him hurt. But that doesn't change the facts. I know what I saw, I know what I heard. They could do anything they want to me, but to twist the facts in this case, they can't do that. The truth, Miss Hill, can shift depending on who's telling the story. For example, isn't it true that as recently as last winter, you were on intimate terms with Alan Michael Spaulding, the son of the defendant, and coincidentally, the other material witness in this case? We were friends. In fact, yes. you were something more than friends, weren't you, Miss Hill? You were romantically involved. No. I, I mean, yeah. But... Why did you split up with Alan Michael Spaulding? Well, what does that have to do with anything? I, I mean, you are going to object if they ask that question, sure, right, Mr. Sure, but the Robinson? defense attorney will insist that it's relevant. Objection overruled. Answer the question, Miss Hill. What was the question again? What was the reason for your breaking up with Alan Michael Spaulding? Miss Hill. He 
had the mistaken idea that I was interested in Alan. Alan Michael had the mistaken idea that you were romantically interested in his father. It was mistaken at the time, yes. Then how do you suppose he got that idea? From Alan. He wouldn't give up. He just kept... Could it be that you're the one who wouldn't give up, Miss Hill? That you were after Alan Spaulding from the moment you met him. That you opted for his son as a second choice. No, but when you saw a chance, not. you dumped the son and you lashed onto the father I broke the up with bed. Alan Michael a long time before I dated Alan. What do you mean by a long time, Miss Hill? Um, a month. Two months? So, uh, three, four months. Well, that is a long time when you're in a hurry. I was not in a hurry. I didn't even know that I wanted to even date Miss him. Hill, you were having sexual relations with the father within months of your liaison with the son. Isn't that true? I, I didn't know the exact time. I, I started dating Alan. You do I dated... have a history, don't you, Miss Hill? I seem to remember recent headlines about you and a police detective who was so angry over a love affair with you that he actually had there trumped up no charges, which got you affair. arrested. They weren't trumped up charges. I was jailed for Ms. not Hill, revealing... the detective was suspended. Well, I'm sorry for that, but it wasn't my fault. You seem to have left quite a trail. I am not responsible for anybody's actions. Are you responsible for your own actions? You have played a father and a son against each other, bestowing, <laughs> perhaps, selling your gifts to the highest bidder. <laughs> you think it's funny? It's absurd. You think it's funny, Miss Hill? You traded Alan Michael for his father when you thought oh, Alan Starr was, was rising again. And when you found out that he was having trouble regaining control no. of the company. You no. ran back to the sun That's and you crazy. both concocted the story. That's crazy. How much was he? Dad, it's me. Look, we know you're both in there. Would you open the door? I can't remember. Is there, is there a window in the stop, bathroom? Stop, stop. You calm down and forget about getting dressed. Oh, we don't let them in. They're just going to get the manager to open the door. Roger. Be with you in a minute. Get back into bed. Why should we make this easy for them? Please. It's going to be okay. This is not a good time. Roger, just let us in. I prefer you came back later. We're not leaving. Excuse me. <clears throat> Hi, Daddy. Stepmother. Guiding light in a moment. I'm not sure of the protocol for all this. Do I invite you to sit down, offer you some coffee? Get dressed. You're coming with me. Come on, Ross. Didn't we go through enough trouble last night? Get dressed, Dinah. I'll be waiting downstairs for you. Better do as he says. Let's go. No, I want to talk to him for a minute. I'll be waiting in the car. Why, Dad? Honey, Why did you do this? Honey, listen to me. I'm not out to hurt anybody here. But you are. Look, I know that you are upset. You don't know anything. You have to understand that I am not perfect. I have never pretended to be perfect. Maybe I shouldn't have let it get this far. What is, that, what is that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, maybe I shouldn't have gotten involved with Dinah in the first place, but you know where I was at the night of the Fifth Street Ball. The Fifth Street Ball? What does that have to do? Oh, my God, are you saying that this has been going on with Dinah since then? Look, I was at a low point in my life. I was feeling completely lost, and I found myself going out to Hart's Farm in the middle of the night, and that's where it happened for the first time. Dinah followed you. Look, I'm not excusing myself. I'm just trying to explain what happened. I was so alone and feeling so empty, and what can I tell you? Dinah was there, and she understood, and she helped me get over the loss of your mother. You liar. No, no, no. 
You know something? Loving Dinah is not easy. Forget us. Oh, no, 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 no. Tell me. I want to know. Tell me what I should do. I was out of line. No, Please no. I mean, it would be wonderful for me if I could just, just love her just the way I love Peter and Bill. But I can't because it's hard. Well, I'm not a parent. I, I'm not even going to pretend to know the answer. No, to but you think stuff. that she's right, don't you? I don't think a child should have to earn its parents' love. I just think it should be there. Oh, just be there. Oh, isn't that nice? That, yeah, sure, that's the way it's supposed to be. But what about Dinah? She's, she's lied to me. She's hurt me every chance she can get. She loves to deceive me. Am I just supposed to love her? I don't know. Well, I don't know either. Yeah, sure, I guess I am. Love her no matter what. Doesn't every child deserve that? I mean, you get mad at your kids sometimes, but do you ever really stop loving You know them? what? You're right, but you don't understand all of this because you're not a parent. You're the one who wanted to get into this. Of all people, I would expect you to understand what it feels like when you know that you should love somebody and you don't. What about you and your dad? Oh, come on. Now, just drop it right now while we're ahead. My father has nothing to do with this, and you know it. Alan, listen, you just got out of the hospital. You're in enough trouble already with the police. You can't start a fight with Buzz Cooper. I just came here to try to find Alan Michael, and Alex. If that Alan is all. Alan Michael hears that you are here, he will never speak to you again. Now, you will simply go. Remember who you are. Spaulings don't win their battles this way. I'm going, Cooper, but don't you dare try to come between me and my son. You don't have to. You've lost him. It's not over yet. Buzz, I apologize for my brother's temper. Well, it's not necessary. You're just wasting your time on someone who doesn't need it. Oh, look, I didn't come here to debate about Ellen. A gift. Mystery rebuilding fund. Very generous. <laughs> What's the angle? I was driving by Frank and Laney's new house. I was rather surprised to see that it wasn't completed yet, so maybe this will push it along. Well, helps always appreciate it, especially from a friend. How about some hoops? <laughs> Wish I could another time. You and I have been through a lot, haven't we? Yeah, we have. <sighs> yes. Well, it's nice to know we can count on each other. I mean, I help you, your family, when needed, and vice versa. Is there something you want from me? Well, you can see how important it is for Alan to find his son, to talk to him. His son doesn't want to be found. Well, would you at least convey a message for me, then? Tell Alan Michael how much we, we miss him. Oh, shame on you, Alice. You're trying to bribe me. Yes, I am. Is it gonna work? Buzz, don't be angry. With Nobody's me. mouth. He's not even yours. Oh, come on. I'm only trying to help my family. I mean, you I know how it is to, to be so disconnected from your own children, Buzz. Alan just doesn't want Alan no. Michael to hate him. He doesn't him. want he his doesn't... son to testify against him in the preliminary hearing. Oh, That's come what he on. Want. All the allegations against my brother are brought about solely by one person, Miss Tangie Hill. That's the one that's pushing this whole connection with Brent Lawrence. So she invented this whole thing? All right. Alan was approached by Brent Lawrence with some damaging information as, as to how Alan Michael was running the company. Oh, so he admits that part. But he didn't set him up. No, he's... Alan didn't even know it was true at the time. What he did was protect his own son by, by keeping Brent Lawrence under control. And then Tangie Hill concocts this, uh, this elaborate story just to discredit Alan. Why would she do that? Because she is a mean, spiteful... Look... She is an opportunist, Buzz. Oh, I have never seen her in that light, you know? Well, then you don't know her as well as I do. Alan Michaels bought this whole sordid story of her, but he, he hasn't even had a chance to talk to his father yet. Oh, come on, Buzz. 
Buzz. You of all people should understand what it's like to have your own son hate you. Don't make me hate you. Buzz, we're friends. Because that's what I'm going to do. If I have to put you in a category with him, by God, I'll... Oh, come on, but just don't prejudge him quite so harshly. Give him... The man helped the creep that raped my daughter get away. I know, I do not forgive that. I do not forget that. For anyone, not for you, not for anyone. You give up on him. He's going to go to prison. If I had to send him to prison, he's going to go to prison. Robinson. I sent him home to resharpen his fangs. I thought you had enough for one day. Yeah. When the going gets tough, the tough gets sick. <laughs> this has nothing to do with being tough. It's a matter of getting Alan to pay for what he did. And unfortunately, that burden fell on you. My, my testimony in Alan Michelson, I don't think it's going to be enough. I mean, they said something about getting Brent's sister there so that they could get the judge to bind Alan over for trial. I mean, what happens if I, I do testify and it's all for nothing? No, no, it can never be for nothing when you stand up to Alan Spaulding. I hope you're right. Listen, you want me to give you a lift home? Thanks. I'll be okay. Right. Look, your relationship with your dad is every bit as complicated. I don't want to talk about it. Why not? It's the same thing. My you father has nothing to do with this. You're not listening to me. It is the same thing. You tried to love him. You wanted to love him, and you can't because he hurts you. I want to love Dinah, and I can't because every time I turn around, she hurts me. Maybe that's how she feels about you. What do you mean? What? Are you taking her side in this? What? What are we talking about sides? What, because I'm on your side, does that mean I have to agree with everything no, you say? No, no, but you've been with me on the beginning since this. You've seen her. You know well, how I, she... I wasn't around for all the years that you weren't there for Dinah, or Ross wasn't there for Dinah. No, I don't know what that was what? like. Are you saying it's my... Are you saying it's my fault? Because I had to give her up? No, I'm not. I'm trying... I'm trying to give you a little insight to what's going on with your daughter, and obviously I'm doing one hell of a lousy job of it. You know, I had to give her up. I had to. I didn't have a choice. I, I couldn't have an abortion. I couldn't marry Ross. I was a brat. I was young. I was spoiled. I didn't know how to take care of anybody. And it was just a mistake. It was just a mess and a horrible mistake. That's all. Maybe that's what Dinah thinks. Maybe she thinks that you feel like she's just one big, huge, horrible mistake. I'm sorry, I, did, I, did, I don't know how it got to this, but I gotta go. I'll call you later. So what now, hon? You lock me in my room, take away my driving privileges? What? No. <clears throat> I can't force you to do anything, Dinah. Chronologically, you're an adult and you can do whatever you wish within the law. Well, that's not how you acted at Rogers. You were ready to drag me out by the hair if I didn't come with you and then maybe kill Roger for good measure. You're my daughter and I'm not going to sit around and watch you make a mistake that you could regret forever. If Roger's a mistake, he's not my worst. And at least he doesn't hate me like my whole family does. Dinah, nobody hates you, but we do want to see you grow up, and you have a chance right now to make a fresh start. That is what I'm trying to do with Roger. But you and Mother don't want anybody to help me. See, that's not part of your plan. You want me to suffer humiliation and come crawling back to you for forgiveness. You haven't learned anything at all, have you? Yeah, I've learned who my real friends are. If you think Roger Thorpe is your friend, my dear, you're sadly well, mistaken. Well, at least he doesn't wait for me to hit bottom until he'll come near me. At least he cares, Daddy, about how I live and the way I feel. Great, I suppose you want to stick around and help my father convince me that I'm ruining my life. No, leave me out of it, please. I guess it's just us. 
And what is it I can say to get through to you? It's time to put our cards on the table, Daddy. You are asking me to give up the one person in this town who hasn't dumped me or judged me. The one person who's willing to take me in after everyone else kicked me out. Take you in, Dinah? What does that mean, take you in? What is Roger offering you? A place to live, food, clothes, money, a commitment? What are you offering me instead? Dinah, you are so young, and yet you seem worldly, sophisticated, independent. But I have a feeling that's just a cover, isn't it? No, I'm not covering anything. I'm not. And if I have had to be worldly, it's it, it, because I've had to be. I know. I wasn't there for you, and I never had a chance to give you a sense of values. Daddy, values are all relative. What works for you may not work for me. I know I dropped out of school, but I managed to pick up that much. What I'm offering you can't be bought or sold. Now, I'm asking you to give up Roger because I know firsthand what happens to people when they get too close to that man. How do you live with Blake hating him so much? She obviously adores him. We're not talking about Blake. We're talking about you. And you've been on the run ever since you arrived in Springfield. You never gave yourself a chance to succeed. And if you stay with Roger, you're not even going to get one. I'm not as naive as you think I am. Think about it. Even a woman as smart and mature as Holly barely survived with him. She didn't appreciate him. I do. Tina, I'm asking you to trust me. I want what's best for you, honey. That's what I want, too, Daddy. And what's best for me is what makes me feel good. And that's why I like being with Roger, because he gives me things that make me feel good. He's using you. If he didn't have a use for you, you'd oh, be out that door in a minute. saying that. What exactly do you and Mother think he is using me for? What good could I possibly do him? Huh? Well, do you have an answer for that? My answer is I've known this man. I've known him for many, many years. Well, Roger knows me better than anyone in this town. And he has never tried to change me. And you're asking me to give that up for what? All I can offer you is my love. Well, I'm sorry, Daddy. That's not enough. Because I only get your love if I do what you want me to do. And that price is just too high. I pour my heart out to you, and you call me a liar. Boy, that husband of yours has... Don't some... you dare say a word against me. You know us. what losing your mother did to me. Don't I deserve a chance for some happiness with someone else? Not Dinah. Not Ross's daughter. Why? Ross found happiness with you, my daughter. But she is... She is of age. And she's warm, and she's willing, and she thinks I am magnificent. Now, what, is it a sin for me to find a way to enjoy all that? Oh. 
mom kept telling me and I wouldn't listen to oh, you. Oh, wait a minute. So now your mother's turning you against me? You. This has nothing to do with mom. In fact, in a strange way, it has nothing to do with Dinah either. Could have me. It's about you and me, Dad. Dinah is a manipulative little schemer, but she's a rank amateur compared to you. And I'm finally getting to see how you operate. Okay, you watch your mouth right now before you say something you're going to regret. What about you, Dad? Do you ever regret anything you do or say? No, because you got caught or because you didn't get what you want, but because you hurt someone? Boy, all this because of Dinah? You said that... You turn to Dinah to ease your pain over mom. That's not what I saw last night. Last night, I saw my father hell-bent on causing as much pain for every single person in that room. Walking in with Dinah on your arm was your way of saying to hell with all of you, including me. Never you, Chrissy. Yes, I was there with Ross and Vanessa and all those people who don't like you very much. You were just trying to get even. You're trying to pay everybody back. You kissed Dinah in front of everybody you provoked ross into hitting you oh just fine so you i put my you jaw right in the... who you hurt you crossed the line dad you blew it i have always defended you but not this time i'm not doing what it did exactly time. did i do you hurt the man that i love and you can't get away with that okay let me get this clear you're taking ross's side against mine is this yes. it yes yes i am You love me, and you know I love you. I wouldn't want to live without you. I've lost too much already. I'll always love you. That won't change. But I will turn my back on you, and I'll walk out of your life forever if you continue to hurt Ross. You don't mean that. I do, and I will prove it. You're giving me an ultimatum. It's very simple. If you want me in your life, you have to stop seeing her. It's either me or Dinah. It's up to you. Dinah, no, please, honey. Don't go. Daddy, I'm not doing this to hurt you, okay? I don't want to hurt you. Well, that's a little difficult to believe. It. But love hasn't done a damn thing for me so far. You know, love can't buy my clothes or pay my rent. Nobody ever said that it would. But you're young and intelligent. You could do that yourself. All right, here we go again. Here's the drill. Work hard, save your money, don't smoke, don't drink, don't have fun, don't do anything. Well, forget it. Daddy, you people want to starve me while I'm living in a tent somewhere, all to, quote, teach me a lesson, unquote. That is not it at all. Don't get me wrong, Daddy. You are great. But when you ask me to give up something solid, like Roger, I have to wonder. Could you tell me why? Why isn't my love enough? Well, maybe I didn't have it long enough for it to mean anything to me. What about me? Does my love mean anything to you? There's a new address on CBS where anything can happen, anytime, anywhere, with anyone. Central Park West, Wednesdays this fall.